Aotearoa New Zealand is famous for its stunning landscapes and outdoor lifestyle. Nature is inherently inclusive, but some of our culture surrounding it is not. False beliefs, negative perceptions and a lack of support in education mean that some people who menstruate don't get to enjoy Papatuanuku and all she has to offer. This series will explore why some people have struggled with their period in the outdoors and provide practical tools on how to change this for the future, bringing mana back to the experience of menstruation. The rainbow community is a very, very broad term. Essentially what rainbow refers to is people with diverse genders, sexualities, and people born with variations in sex characteristics. That can be gay, lesbian, bi, pan, trans, non-binary, intersex, queer, like just the list goes on. It's a very rich and colorful and diverse community. The outdoors doesn't have a gender. It doesn't care, it's unforgiving. When I was exploring my gender, and feeling a real disconnect from parts of my body. Movement was like the only place where I was just by myself and not a gendered thing. I was appreciating my body in different ways, its functions rather than how people were gendering me. If you're endosex or cisgender, this might all seem unfamiliar to you. A good place to start is to familiarise yourself with some basic terms about sex and gender. Sex at birth refers to sex recorded when a person is born. Your sex characteristics describe a range of physical features, such as genitalia, reproductive anatomy and hormones. Some people have a variation of their sex characteristics and don't fit medical norms or stereotypes of female or male bodies. Gender refers to a person's identity as male, female or another gender that may be non-binary. Gender is about how a person feels internally, and this might differ from their sex at birth. Cisgender is a term that describes people who identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. If a baby is born and they're assigned female at birth, and they grow up and they become a woman, you know, and they feel that it's all in alignment, that that's essentially what cisgender is. Trans is a really broad umbrella term and it's a shortening of transgender and this describes people whose gender is different from the gender they were assigned at birth. Non-binary essentially refers to people who don't exclusively identify as a man or a woman. You can't tell if someone's non-binary just by looking at them. It's not the same as just being androgynous or like gender neutral. Gender is fluid and, and can change over time and might not be yeah, the same thing as sex for, for many people. Gender diversity is often talked about in a very Western framework. In so many uh, indigenous cultures across the world, gender diversity has actually just been an integral part of society and life. In te ao Māori, gender diversity and fluidity has been integral and valued. The effects of colonisation on the way that we view our own bodies is immense. Our bodies are part of nature, right? We go back to viewing ourselves as part of nature. We can see that being trans is normal. It's not something that makes us other. We can see ourselves as part of just the way that the world works and the universe expresses itself. And I think that's a really special thing. Yeah, because yeah, trans is beautiful. We're not gendering nature, so why gender people? I've always been quite androgynous, sweeping away from traditional femininity. Mm. And it was a struggle because society and the teachers expected me to wear traditionally what female presenting people were. Yeah. When talking about periods, most people think that it only affects girls and women, but the reality is more complicated. You can't tell if someone menstruates by looking at them. A person who looks feminine may not get their period or someone who presents as male might. I think it's really important to highlight that as well as periods being a real uncomfortable experience generally, whatever their gender, there's the added thing of experiencing gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is a term that describes the often really intense disconnect between a person's sense of self and who they know themselves to be in terms of their gender and the body um, that they have <laughs> um, and the, the sex they were assigned at birth. 
So that mismatch can often cause, um, yeah, a lot of disconnect and disassociation from one's body and, and often is talked about as quite a distressing experience. I remember having anxiety around, am I going to have my period? Like, how am I going to sort this out? And then also there's that conflation of gender with if you menstruate, you must be a woman or a girl, right? Yeah. So I never wanted to bring it up because I would have been misgendered. I think that the way that we view like traditionally feminine things or traditionally masculine things, we need to deconnect those from gender, right? Nothing is only for men, nothing is only for women. So I think that by shifting away from feminine hygiene products and from women who menstruate or to people who menstruate and menstrual hygiene products, that is just going to culturally change the way that we think about gender. It's so important to make periods and make menstruation genderless because mm. it's something that a lot of people face and it's not something that we need to be attached to heteronormativity. How comfortable a person feels within their body is complex and changeable. This is true for everyone, including cisgendered people. Some gender diverse people will feel positive within their bodies, while others might feel disconnected due to a conflict between their assigned gender and their sense of self. There's nothing wrong with feeling this way, but there are a few simple ways that we can make everyone feel accepted about it. Don't assume anything about a person's experience based on their gender expression encouraging less body policing and more body celebration. Create a safe, accepting group culture that's open to different people's needs. We focus so much on the, the differences between rather than the variations within. Gender diversity has always existed. Trans and gender diverse people have always been here. Gender euphoria just refers to all the, the happy and the joyful experiences of that coming into your own body through affirming your own gender. I mostly feel it when people use my name or my pronouns. It can be like such a wide range of things can cause gender euphoria, but they all create the same feeling. And I think that that feeling is, it's so precious, it's sacred, and it's something that I want every trans person to feel.